Hello everyone, this is Dr. Bob Browner with Creamy Coronavirus Update number 33, and uh, today the main topic is going to be, is it safe to open schools? Uh, there have been a couple of guidelines released lately, and uh, I think it's good to kind of put them into context and uh, what's going on with our community spread right now. So as I said last week, I, I've been frustrated as our health, health professionals across the country that uh, we screwed things up uh, initially, which I think can be forgiven because a lot of country messed up initially and didn't respond fast enough. It wasn't just us, it was Italy and Spain and others as well. Uh, but very few countries messed up the, set, the next wave, which is us, because we didn't get uh, our virus under control and didn't put plans in place, and it took way too long for us to put any mask ordinances in place. Um, and that's a huge mistake. A third mistake is if, is if well, we get the school reopening wrong. And so many countries messed up number one, and uh, if we had been like Germany, we'd have had 100,000 less dead Americans, and because of mistake number two, we'll probably have another 100,000 more dead Americans in Germany. And if things go wrong in the next couple months with a lack of mask ordinances across the country, I could see us being at half a million by the end of the year. So the number one thing is just put on your mask. So uh, we've had a couple proposals released last week, uh, one from the University of Nebraska College of Public Health, and yes, I am one of the co-authors on that, so a little biased, although honestly I play more of a minor role than some of the other major characters who did more of the work and have more expertise than me. Uh, Ali Khan is one I'll, I'll talk about. He uh, has international expertise, and what was based on this guidelines was one him uh, and, and some of these others uh, folks actually uh, communicating with uh, countries across the world on the 15 countries that did it successfully, what did they do? Uh, another thing I would point out is these are people with public health credentials, so quit listening to viral videos of people who do not have any of these credentials. You'll notice almost everybody has an MPH on this page, or at least a PhD. If they don't have those things, and just having an MD does not mean you're an expert in public health. Uh, most doctors have maybe two to three weeks max of epidemiology and statistics in medical school 20 years ago. That does not make them a credible expert necessarily unless they've got added expertise. So do not listen to viral videos of people who do not have MD, an MPH, or other similar credentials after their name. Uh, unlike those uh, viral rants, I actually put my sources on these YouTube videos, so if you are on this, you can click on View Page, uh, and then down below it will have resources and articles, and if you hit Show More, you'll have a bibliography of all these articles. So on this one, for example, this article is actually linked, uh, both uh, in newsprint like, uh, like this one, or it may be a New England Journal or a CDC article. So uh, the report put out the College of Public Health has some benchmarks, and why did they pick these benchmarks? And they suggest opening based on these benchmarks. And these are not black and white, and nobody would claim that these are black and white and will not be subject to change based on further evidence. So do not take any of these as if this is the end-all, be-all word of God. Uh, so, but why did we pick these? So Ali picked these because of the 13 of the 15 countries that opened successfully were in either the green or yellow, mostly in yellow, and on their way down when they opened successfully. There are two exceptions, however. Uh, there was one country that opened in what he has as the orange level, that was Denmark. They opened at a level of about 3.5 per 100,000, uh, but they had a downward trend and they had very aggressive cohorting. They had uh, kids in cohorts down to six. Uh, but there was also another country, Singapore, that opened in the seven to eight range, uh, but when they opened, they had a downward trend and they knew where the outbreak was coming from uh, and they had plans in place in school. Uh, and so, uh, so is Lincoln going to be at that place? Well, we won't know. We put in a mask mandate about here. It appears that it's leveling off. We'll find out in the next two weeks whether it goes down. So we could pull a Singapore if everything goes as hoped. Now, there's a cautionary tale, and what we don't want to do is what Israel did. So Israel actually did get its epidemic uh, under control, but then they screwed up by opening without a plan. Uh, essentially, they, what did they get wrong? They had no organized plan. They had no mass requirements. They had no educational campaign that was widespread and consistent, and schools opened with no guidelines on distancing, hand washing, or smaller cohorts. We have all of these in place in Lincoln, Nebraska right now. We do have a plan. We do have a mask ordinance. We have requirements at least in Lincoln public schools, but unfortunately, from what I've heard, not some of the other schools are the Catholic schools, Lutheran schools, Lincoln Christian, Waverly, and Norris. Are they going to have mask requirements? That could mess us up. So even if LPS has the right plan, if the other districts don't have the right plan, that could be a problem. We've had multiple education claims or plans around masking. Our schools will have distancing, hand washing, and smaller cohorts. And the smaller herd is not an absolute number. It depends on the risk and will be adjusted as time goes by. So uh, we don't want to pull off in Israel where we go it spread up to here and like and right now some of our communities in this range, some are in this range, some are actually higher than that which I'll show you in just a minute. Um, and for the people who say that no it doesn't spread in schools, they are wrong, it does spread in schools. So in Israel with that, with the lack of those things in place, the number one source of their spread was educational institutions. Uh, and so they do spread, they also spread in events like sporting events, houses, 
places of worship, churches, synagogues, and recreational leisure. Those are bars and restaurants. This has been our main case in Lincoln. It's been mostly bars and horse parties so far. So we do have a specific area where we know our outbreaks are coming from. Uh, there's also another outbre uh, re expert recommendation released by Harvard. Uh, Harvard and, a, and the Safford Center and actually a large coalition of other people who are working on this have actually created their list. Their benchmarks are a little different than ours. They use ret thresholds of 1, 10, and 25. Uh, they're coming at it from a different perspective. They're using it more of, a, I think, would I would say a community uh, perspective and, prop, and the math of, of, of spread perspective, not by looking at what other schools did in other countries. Either way is the way to get this, and I'm not going to say that either is the perfect way, and I think it's likely that the, real, the end answer will be some hybrid between what Harvard's proposing and what groups like UNMC are proposing. Uh, they have a different way of looking at things. You have to keep in mind that these people are out of Boston and New York City, for example. So they mentioned stay-at-home orders in the in orange category. I am not a fan of that, not because I don't think they're effective, uh, but because I don't think they are needed in, in Lincoln, Nebraska. The example I would use is where those people are, grow up and where they work, this is the commute to work, this is my commute to work this morning. Obviously this is safe no matter how bad the pandemic gets. Uh, Lincoln, Nebraska never looks like this except maybe on a Husker game day which won't be happening this fall anyway. So this is not a less of an issue in Lincoln, Nebraska than it is say in New York or Boston. So a stay at home order I do not believe is necessary for us. Uh, they do have, uh, what I do like about them is they, they prioritize K through 5 over 6 through 8 over 9 through 12. So in their orange category, they would suggest that most uh, schools go to remote learning, for example, where we are right now. Whereas K through 6, 8 could be open, but with certain things in place. Um, why do they do that? Well, the difference is, is that pre-K through 5 has both greater needs and lower risk, and you need to balance both of these things. And I think what is frustrating me is people obsessing about risk or obsessing about need and not realizing there will need to be a balance of those two. So pre-K through 5 is, is safer even in a pandemic and because of two reasons, and sometimes it's needed even though it's not safer. So one of the biggest problems is educational losses at a young age are harder to regain. And so it's more important for them to be in school than it is for the high school. So there's a higher priority. It's more difficult for them to do remote learning. Uh, a 10th grader should be capable of mostly self-directed remote learning, whereas a second grader cannot do that. Uh, also in younger age groups, they're more likely to have food insecurity. They have a risk of not, we have a risk of not catching a blues and neglect when they're not at school. It's a larger impact on their work on working in single parents because now they're going to need childcare if we don't have K through five, which that's not an issue for high school, for example. The other thing is the intervention we can be put, put in place in small in, in K pre K through five are much easier to do. We can, they have, they're literally smaller schools, so they're, therefore it decreases the risk. It's easier to cohort them because they're already set up with a curriculum where there is often a homeroom teacher and we can keep them in that mostly that room so they're not spreading around and so the level of contacts might be 20 uh, if we have a small cohort in Norwood Park Elementary whereas in Lincoln East High School it could be 2,300. Uh, they're also more geographically, geographically contained so if there's an outbreak in Norwood Park it's likely only going to be in that area of the city whereas Lincoln High it could express it can affect the entire community. Also, there are very good, uh, there's very good evidence that young children may be less likely to spread the virus. They still will probably spread it to some extent, but a lesser amount. There are two reasons for this. One is they express, they likely express the protein that the virus lags onto at a lower rate, and so that may be a biologic reason for why they're less likely. There's also a physical reason why they may be likely to slightly spread. One is, and they mean it's just because they're smaller, so when they take a breath, it's not as deep a breath. They would therefore be uh, expelling fewer virus particles, and when they expel those virus particles, they'll be expelling them at waist level, not at face level. All these factors play into the decision, and so it's a much more complicated than the black and white that many people are making it out to be. Um, and so the people who say that it doesn't spread are wrong. Uh, there's actually another study in South Korea where basically, at least in older children, meaning uh, high schoolers, they will spread it just as likely as adults, and that's why high school needs to be treated differently than K through 5. Uh, if you want to look at the globalepidemics.org, they actually have their risk category at every county, and you can drill down on it yourself. Uh, so basically, everybody in, down here in red probably should be, I think, well, should be remote, uh, possibly in orange, depending on what else is going on in your community. Uh, you can see that the south is the worst, and uh, it gets a little better as you go farther north. And you can click on your own county.
would like. So you can click on Nebraska. You'll see that these counties are in orange, which we'll talk a little about whether it's orange versus red versus green. Uh, but also keep in mind that these people don't really understand rural. So Hooker County with 682, that was an outbreak of four people. So I wouldn't call this red. Probably you should lump all these together rather than looking at the county level because of the, the small population sizes out west. That's why our Tableau site has the ability for you, can, you to click those uh, counties and add them together because if I were in the panhandle, the numbers aren't going to make much sense, but maybe you should add all 11 counties together actually. So the big uh, problem right now is Douglas County. Douglas County is different than Lincoln, so I've had emails, well, if Douglas County is doing why aren't we doing it? Because Douglas County's outbreak is much worse than ours, and the trust trend is on the up uptick not on the downtick. Also we put in a mass mandate last week they haven't put theirs in place although it sounds uh, like they're going to. The Catholic County Board of Horth is also going to push back against Ricketts who, uh, whose uh, plan unfortunately is not effective and got us into this point. They're going to push back and it looks like they will put in a mass mandate. Uh, it's probably too little too late but hey better late than never. Uh, the other thing is let's talk about wrist dial. So I think there's too much obsession about the color of the wrist dial. The color is simply a communication tool to convey risk, but the color is inherently arbitrary. What is more important is what the actual numbers say and the context around these numbers. So here we are uh, using those same Tableau sites using not the Ali Khan University of Nebraska me metric, but the Harvard metric. Regardless, the data under length is the same, but the reaction to these could be very different. So even on the, Har the less restrictive Harvard site, Douglas County is already approaching this red level and their numbers are still going up. So this to me is very different. So Omaha probably needs to be much more aggressive than Lincoln does. Lincoln put in a mass mandate back here and it looks like our curve is flattening and we could turn down just like we did after the outbreak of the, of the Smithfield plant. So if we get a turn down like this, then it could be safe for us to open our schools uh, the way we had hoped to open them. Uh, however, we don't know this for, will take two more weeks. If it turns around and goes this way, we will be all remote in Lincoln, Nebraska two weeks from now, but we don't know that. And a lot of this is dependent on you, the average citizen, whether you do the right thing in Lincoln or Omaha or wherever you live. If you're going to be reckless and have house parties and go to the bar and get and spread infection, then we will probably will not have school uh, on, in person. But if you do the right thing, which we've been hopefully getting everybody to do in Lincoln, we might. Uh, Douglas County, I'm not sure if they will get there in two weeks. Um, and the problem that is, is that people keep blaming the schools for us. We, the schools, we did not put ourselves in this position. Our president and our governor put us in this position. We botched the response to the, to the epidemic and we're stuck in a lose-lose situation here. So there is not going to be a perfect solution. We're going to have to do the best we can with the mess that we've inherited from our leaders. Uh, a few other things, uh, keep in mind that there's uh, some other stuff coming out that unfortunately uh, the duration of, of illness, even in young people ages 20 to 30, uh, can last three and four weeks. So it's not like a flu where you get it over in a week, it actually might be longer than that. Uh, there are some concerns of a myocarditis in, in, in uh, athletes, so those of you who've been pushing your kids into sports and they've gotten infected to the baseball team, if they have moderate to severe symptoms, they may need cardiac clearance. So this just came out in this last week. Uh, lastly, there are some signs of hope. So one of the reasons we keep trying to say we need to delay this pandemic is because we keep getting better. So this out of the Lincoln Journal uh, just this week, dexamethasone when used in the ICU settings, their mortality rate was actually down to 30%. That's a big improvement. When this uh, uh, pandemic was coming out, some of the reports uh, four months ago were showing ICU fatality rates of 70%. So because of all the things that our doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists are learning as far as how we ventilate people, the medications we can use, we've already gotten the mortality down from 70 to 30 percent. If we could give them a couple more minutes and get a few other tools in their toolbox like convalescent serum, we could push that even lower, which makes it much safer for us to open up our community. So one part of the thing is delaying so that we can catch up to all this. Uh, a last, a commentary about when do you wear a mask and when do you not wear a mask. And so here's a, a, a gallery of bad selfies of me. So one, uh, we had a meme about people, well, if school board members are going to do this, they should be meeting at school too. Well, we have, and I literally spent eight hours yesterday in Lincoln Public Schools with this mask on. I would not ask a teacher or student to go to a school if I wouldn't go, and I've been going all summer long, actually. I just wear a mask, and if I do that, it is safe. Uh, this is me at work. Uh, we, I work in an area with a healthcare facility. It's almost all, usually a vacant hallway and I used, didn't used to wear the mask when I would go to the bathroom. Now I do. Why? Because we have higher layers of community spread and even though I'm not worried about my health, uh, I, in a healthcare facility there might be someone who else is sick along the way and even though that brief passing is a very low risk, I'm going to wear the mask just to reduce their anxiety. But that doesn't mean you always have to wear a mask. So one person I know pasted a meme of, of Fauci not wearing a mask at a baseball game insinuating that he doesn't believe in masks. That's wrong. 
long. He was outside. He, he and his group has pre, pre, have been pre-tested, and it's his social group. So if you are with your social group, it is okay to be outside at events like this without a mask, and this is me. So we went to the restaurant Hero 88, but we're spread out here. There's It's outside. It's much safer. We didn't need a mask in that environment. This is us at Deer Creek Winery. Uh, this is a very safe event. You've got a band. You've got people spread out in their social group six feet apart. Yes, bring your mask in case you have to go and use the bathroom or order a drink, but an outdoor event like this, I think, is perfectly safe in a pandemic. Uh, lastly, I think there's a good, you know, there's a link to this, it's the Tony Blair Institute, looking about individualizing your risk. So all of us will actually have to make these decisions ourselves, and I think it's a really nice discussion. And he actually suggested, which I, this group anyway, suggested that maybe we ought to do a color coding system where there are people high risk who are A category people, they should be given a N95 mask with a color code, so we all know that they're high risk, so we can do everything we can to make to protect them. We'll give them a wider berth. Maybe we'll let them go to the grocery store at hours. The rest of us can't get there. There are things we can put in place even within a pandemic. So most of us can do what we want to do, but still make it safe for these people. I thought that was a nice discussion of individualized risk. So hopefully this is helpful to you. Add to the disclaimer, of course, because this is my opinion. It's not necessarily about help here, but this is where I live in case you want to verify that I'm not a crazy YouTube person. Uh, so hopefully this is helpful to you.